In nature, there are many different types of lipid molecules. And by definition, a lipid molecule is a biological molecule that is not soluble in water, so it does not dissolve in an aqueous environment. Now, that's because if we study the structure of a lipid molecule, the majority of that lipid molecule consists of a nonpolar hydrophobic section. Now, many of the lipids inside our body and inside other organisms as well consist of a hydrophobic section known as the fatty acid. So, whenever a lipid contains fatty acids, it's the fatty acid component of the lipid that makes it hydrophobic nonpolar. That basically gives it the ability to remain insoluble in an aqueous environment. So, because fatty acids are so dominant and so important, in this lecture I'd like to focus on what fatty acids actually are, the systematic approach to naming fatty acids, and then discuss some properties of fatty acids, and how going from one fatty acid to another fatty acid, the properties may actually change. So what exactly are fatty acids? Well, fatty acids are molecules that contain a hydrocarbon chain, and at the end of that hydrocarbon chain we have a carboxylic acid. So two types of groups in a fatty acid, the hydrocarbon chain, which is nonpolar, and the carboxylic acid, which is actually polar. And so because we have a polar and a nonpolar region, fatty acids are technically amphiphatic, but because the hydrocarbon section makes up a much larger portion of the fatty acid, fatty acids are nonpolar molecules, hydrophobic. They will not dissolve in aqueous environments. Now, to demonstrate what we mean by fatty acid, let's take a look at the most common type of fatty acid in humans and other animals, known as palmitic acid. Now, let's take a look at this molecule. So, this entire section is the hydrocarbon chain, and this functional group is that carboxylic acid. So, we have a tiny polar section and this dominant nonpolar section, so that's why fatty acids are predominantly nonpolar. Now, this is one of the many fatty acids that we can find in nature. So, what differentiates one fatty acid from another fatty acid? Well, basically, the length of that hydrocarbon chain, so the number of carbon atoms within that fatty acid. So, in humans and other animals, the dominant types of fatty acids are palmitic acid, which basically contains 16 carbons, as well as oleic acid, which contains 18 carbons. But in animals, as well as humans, we can have fatty acids ranging anywhere from 14 to 24 carbon atoms. So, although the most common fatty acids in biological systems, such as our cells, are the 16 and 18 carbon fatty acids, so palmitic acid and oleic acid, generally, they generally range from uh, 14 to 24 carbons in length. Now, in all animals, including our own cells, these fatty acid hydrocarbon chains are not branched. They do not have any branching points as shown in this particular diagram. So in animals, these hydrocarbon chains and fatty acids never actually branch. Now, the second point of difference between two or more fatty acids is the number of double bonds. And in this particular case, we have no double bonds. And what that means is this is a saturated fatty acid. Saturated basically means this hydrocarbon chain contains a maximum number of hydrogen atoms. Now, as we add double bonds, that decreases the hydrogen count along this backbone, and that makes the fatty acid unsaturated. So, unsaturated means we have double bonds. Now, monounsaturated basically means we have one double bond in that hydrocarbon chain. If we are polyunsaturated, that means we have two or more of these double bonds. So, two in this case and three in this particular case. Now, 
How do we describe the fact that we have 16 carbons and no double bonds? Well, basically, after the name, we basically write 16 to 0, 16 carbon atoms and 0 double bonds. In this particular case, we have 16 of these atoms, one double bond, and so it's 16 to 1. In this case, it's 16 to 2, we have two double bonds, and in this case, it's 16 to 3 because we have 1, 2, 3 of these double bonds. So we see that fatty acids basically vary in the number of carbons, their length, as well as degree of unsaturation. So if we have a high degree of unsaturation, that means we have many double bonds. If we have a low degree of unsaturation, that means we have few double bonds. And as we'll see in just a moment, it's the length and the degree of unsaturation that basically determines the properties of the fatty acid. So properties such as melting point, boiling point, fluidity, and so forth. But before we actually discuss the properties, let's discuss the systematic approach to actually naming these fatty acids. Because technically, palmitic acid is not the systematic name of this fatty acid. It's the more common name. So what exactly is the method that we use to find the systematic name of the fatty acid? Well, basically we begin by counting the number of carbons in the fatty acid. So we have one, two, three, all the way to 16. And we begin with the name for that 16 carbon hydrocarbon and the name is hexadecane, where decane means 10, hexa means six, six plus 10 gives us 16. And the way that we basically go from this name to the name of this particular fatty acid is by removing the E at the end of the hydrocarbon name and replacing it with OIC and then adding acid afterwards. So in this particular case, we have hexadecanoic acid is the proper systematic name for the more common name of palmitic acid. So generally speaking, the name of a fatty acid is derived from the hydrocarbon component. So we begin with the hydrocarbon name, remove the E at the end of the name and simply replace it with OIC and then add acid. The acid is there because we also have that carboxylic acid at the end of that hydrocarbon name. Now in this particular case, things were pretty simple because we didn't have any double bonds. Now what happens if we have one double bond? How can we incorporate the double bond into this name? Well, in the case of one double bond, if we add a double bond anywhere into this hydrocarbon chain besides this location and this location, we basically, all we have to do is replace the A with E. And so the name becomes Hexade uh, hexadecenoic acid. And of course, because we have one double bond, let's say you replace the double bond here, we replace the zero with the one because we have that additional double bond or we have that double bond. Now, let's say we go from a monounsaturated to a polyunsaturated in which we have two of these double bonds. How do we incorporate that into our name? Well, we basically keep the A and after the A, we add the di-E component. So we have, uh, we have hexadecadienoic acid, 16 to 2, 16 carbons, and two double bonds. Now, if we increase the number of double bonds by one, so we have three double bonds, we have this polyunsaturated uh, molecule. In that case, instead of the di, we have the tri. And so we have hexadecadienoic acid, 16 to 3. Now, this information is not actually complete because if I tell you that I'm dealing with a hexadecenoic acid, all you're gonna know is we have 16 carbon atoms and somewhere in that molecule we have a double bond. What you won't know is where that double bond is actually found. So the question is, how do we actually determine or how do we describe the location of that double bond? Well, the way that we begin is 
we begin by numerically labeling, numbering these carbons. And typically we begin on the carboxylic acid side. So we have carbon one, carbon two, three, four, five, all the way to 16 in this particular case. But let's use another example. Let's use this molecule here. So carbon one, two, three, four, five, all the way to let's say 13. Now, carbon number one is carbon number one. That is our reference point. Now, from organic chemistry, we know the carbon next to a carbonyl is known as the alpha carbon. So this is the alpha carbon, this is the beta carbon. And the carbon all the way at the end on the opposing side of the carboxylic acid, the last carbon is known as the omega carbon given by this Greek symbol, omega. So we have alpha, beta, and then we have omega. We'll see why that's important in just a moment. Now, because to break this double bond, we actually have to input a certain amount of energy. And because the energy change symbol is given by the Greek symbol delta, this triangle, the double bond is represented with the delta symbol. And to basically describe the position, the number of that double bond with respect to this reference point, carbon number one, all we have to do is we have to mark it, mark that triangle with a numerical superscript. So let's suppose we want to describe this particular bond here. So this atom is carbon four. And so it's delta four, where four means that's where the bond begins. So we have a bond between carbon four and five, and that's what we mean by delta four. Now, in this particular case, what exactly is the configuration? What is the stereochemistry of this bond? Well, it's a trans double bond because these two groups basically point uh, to opposites in, in uh, opposite sides. And so what that means is it's a trans delta four. Basically to describe the stereochemistry of the double bond, all we have to add is a cis or trans to the beginning <coughs> of that double bond. So in this case, it's, it's trans delta four. In this case, it's trans delta 10. But we can also have cis. In fact, the cis are the more common ones inside our body. And so this is the cis delta eight because this is carbon one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so that's the eighth carbon, bond between eight and ninth carbon. And this is cis because they point in the same exact side. So we can have cis or trans. And actually cis are the more, are the healthier ones as we'll see in just a moment. Now we can also describe the position of that bond in a slightly different way. So instead of beginning at this carbon, we could also begin at the omega carbon. So let's suppose we have this fatty acid. Now we begin, uh, we label that reference carbon as carbon number one. So the omega carbon is the reference carbon and not this carbon. So one, two, three, four, five, all the way to carbon 12. And in this particular description, so when somebody says, you're dealing with an omega-3 fatty acid. What that means is the double bond is on the third carbon from the omega side of that fatty acid, where the omega side is this, is this carbon here. So remember, omega carbon, so one, two, three, this is omega-3, this would be omega-6, and this would be omega-9. In fact, the omega-3, 6, 9 fatty acids that you commonly hear of are exactly these acids. Omega basically means that beginning carbon on the other side, and the number basically designates the position of that double bond with respect to that omega reference atom. So two different ways to basically describe the position of that double bond within that particular fatty acid. Now, the final thing I'd like to focus on is the properties of these fatty acids and what basically determines the properties of these fatty acids. Well, two things basically describe, determine the properties. It's the length of that fatty acid and the number of um, double bonds within that fatty acid. So let's begin with the length. So let's suppose in one beaker we have this palmitic acid that contains 16 carbons. 
In the other beaker, we have an acid, a fatty acid that contains, let's say, 24 carbons, and it's also not, and it's also saturated. So neither of these molecules actually have double bonds. So we're essentially only comparing how the length actually uh, describes the properties of the fatty acid. So it turns out that the melting point of the longer fatty acid will be higher than the melting point of that shorter fatty acid. The question is why? Well, remember, to melt something, we actually have to input energy. And when we melt something by inputting energy, the energy is breaking the intermolecular bonds. And what that implies is the intermolecular bonds in the longer fatty acid are stronger than intermolecular bonds in that shorter fatty acid. The question is, why is that so? Well, what types of bonds do we have between two nonpolar molecules? Well, typically the bonds are London dispersion forces. They're the attractions that exist as a result of the instantaneous dipole moments that exist along this entire hydrocarbon chain. And so because longer fatty acids contain more of these carbon atoms and more H atoms, we have more London dispersion forces within the longer hydrocar within the longer fatty acid solution. So as the length increases, the melting point increases as a result of more London dispersion forces, a stronger intermolecular attraction between those adjacent fatty acid molecules. Now, let's move on to degree of unsaturation. So how exactly does the number 